privilege um, is an unearned advantage, uh, and it's really based on uh, what accrues to us because we're a member of a particular group, not because of anything we've actually earned. So it's an unearned advantage. Um, you know, there's a woman uh, who, whose name is Peggy McIntosh who really talks about uh, privilege as um, an invisible backpack of rights, uh, opportunities that we typically are not even aware of, uh, but uh, not all people are uh, in that group. So some people come with a backpack uh, full and others come with uh, parts of the backpack missing and it has nothing to do with anything they've done. It's really just based on what we look like, families we've been born into, um, and uh, we can't take a whole lot of credit for it. I think I come down on the privileged side of, of many things, but not on all. Uh, I'm white, obviously uh, uh, that's significant. I'm a woman, uh, that's not so significant. Um, I'm an executive, and so based on social class, uh, I have privileges that accrue to me um, as, as a result of that. Um, uh, I've had the luxury as a white person of never having to be concerned about uh, whether or not housing I either wanted to rent or buy would be available to me. As long as I had the resources, it would be. Um, so uh, I think, I think I'm, I'm privileged. Um, the biggest marker for me in my life in terms of understanding better what privilege is and isn't um, accompany the adoption of my son. Uh, he's Peruvian, uh, he's now 28 years old. Uh, I adopted him when he was five weeks old. Um, and he's a brown man. And I've, as his mom, uh, been part of his uh, child rearing and his growth and all the challenges and all the wonders that accompany that. The older he's gotten, the more I've directly seen and experienced uh, what he goes through. And I think it sensitized me in ways that I wasn't before. Um, I've seen him uh, stopped uh, um, uh, by the police um, uh, for basically uh, walking in our neighborhood. Uh, I watched him uh, in downtown Boston uh, as he was crossing the street and somebody yelled out, why don't you go back where you came from? And uh, he said, I'm trying to get to Newton. Um, I know that he's been followed in stores that he's been in. Uh, I know the challenges that, based on our conversations, that he experiences every day. It's opened me up in a much broader way um, to issues that people of color in our um, communities face. And so I've zeroed in more, I've noticed more, I've read more, uh, and I've sort of brought myself to a, a, a better place of understanding, realizing that on some level I'll never fully understand, uh, even though I see it and I feel it, and I feel it really because I'm like, I think it's made me much more tuned in uh, at the Department of Mental Health to our reality um, given our communities across the Commonwealth, given the numbers of people we serve who are people of color, given the numbers of uh, administrators, managers, and clinicians, low numbers. Um, uh, it's really made me uh, commit a different way of trying to do something about that. And as a white woman in this role, um, perhaps I can jiggle that agenda along uh, in a way um, that others might not be able to. Our challenge, each of us, is to simply try to understand. Privilege isn't a good thing or a bad thing, it just is. And how do we use ours to advance uh, issues and causes and agendas that are important? 
Uh, how do we become more sensitive uh, to the issues? What do we do once we're more sensitive? Um, I think that's really the challenge. Be aware of our uh, our privilege. Be aware of our uh, unconscious biases. Make them conscious. Um, and uh, uh, we will slowly, incrementally, as a result of that, move to a different place within this organization.